Hello, hello. Today I will be featuring the tier 9 French cruiser, the Saint Louis. I am currently grinding through the French line, so I am covering these ships uh, as I move through it. Of course, trying to get to the Henry because I really want to see how it plays out. Getting to play the ship properly, though, has been uh, quite an experience. I really dislike this ship at first. The matchmaking is mostly only almost purely tier 9 matchmaking which is quite rare which makes it a good comparison uh, game considering you're not up tiered or low tiered but it's pretty much equal tier opponents now the ship at first I actually really disliked it and then later on when I learned I'm pretty sure I just got better at playing the ship I started liking it a lot more so uh, it, I went from hating it, to, or well, not hating it, but just disliking uh, the lack of impact it had, to really enjoying the playstyle of the ship. Now starting off, the HP pool on the Saint Louis is only 40.9k. Uh, that's pretty much on the lower end. Uh, in fact, I think the only tier 9 cruiser that you beat is the Ibuki. Even squishy ships like Baltimore have more HP than you. Now, it does have 19% torpedo protection, which is worth mentioning because it's more than any other cruiser. But when you have a 40.9k HP pool, and considering how much damage torpedoes really do, reducing it by a fifth isn't really going to allow you to comfortably eat any torps at all. In fact, you still want to avoid them just like any other. But it's worth mentioning that if you do eat one on the belt, you'll, you'll at least benefit from that reduction in damage. One of the big strengths of the ship is, however, the 18.3 kilometers of range. And that's without the range module. I'm using the reload module on the guns. So that's very far. And that's very useful considering how squishy the ship is. Uh, the arcs are fairly comfortable. The shell velocity is 876 meters per second for the HE. Uh, the AP is 30 meters per second slower. I don't really dislike when the speeds are different, but it's not too bad. The AP is also quite comfortable to use, but you have to always adjust a bit. So the HE, you see that they are quite, the shells are quite floaty, but if you've played US cruisers, um, Des Moines, Baltimore, ships like this, Cleveland, then you should be quite comfortable with how, with landing these shells. And as you can see, the fire chance is quite scary on this ship. The default fire chance is 15%, which is already good, but then you of course uh, slap Demolition Expert, as I have, and you slap flags on top, it goes to 70%, and then with flags it goes to 19% fire chance. And the reload with the reload module, since you can easily get away with using the reload module thanks to the 18.3 km range, allows you to get an 8.8 .8 second reload, which is the same as the new buffed Baltimore's reload. So combined with 19% fire chance, 9 guns and uh, this reload, you have a pretty damn scary fire starter in this thing. It's The DPM on this ship is no joke. The torps, they are... Eh, but I mean, they're still the same ones that you have since tier 5, uh, 3 on each side, they deal 14.8k damage, um, they are quite stealthy, they have 9k range, but you're not really going to be launching them at long range targets with any hopes of actually landing them, um, but they are 60 knots of speed and in the occasional brawl and cyclone and things like that, they do get useful. I have found some use for them, but it's quite rare. In fact, the most useful thing with the torps is what you just saw me do there is switching to the torps quickly and using the lead indicator to give me an idea of how fast uh, slash slow uh, the enemy ships are to give me a better idea of where I should aim my guns. Which is something I actually quite like because it's, it's good to see if a ship is stopping, reversing, things like this since the lead indicator will give you the information. So that's one of the often underused values of having torps on a ship, which doesn't, you don't really need the range, speed, damage, all these things to make use of it. Now, the AA on the ship is fantastic. It's really, really good. Uh, it actually beats the Baltimore in long range AA. I think it's got like 104 DPS against Baltimore, something like 91. But on the mid range, the Baltimore beats it quite handily with like 190 to 150 or so. So. But still, um, that's still uh, being able to compete with the Baltimore in Antir is certainly nothing to scoff at. And uh, if you were to f spec the ship into full AA build, you would no doubt become a very strong uh, plane slaughter in this thing. You can get the 7.2 cam range on the long range and 5.1 on the mid range. So obviously, you create quite the AA bubble and a fully spec Saint Louis 
um, AA build would be pretty damn scary for any carrier. Now, it is pretty fast. It's 33 knots. If you go in straight lines, 33 knots. Uh, it has a 720 meter turning circle, which is pretty good. 8.1 second rudder shift, which is okay. That's with the module that increases your rudder shift. Burn down the first of these ships. Uh, and getting arsonist is very common in the ship. In fact, you can see it's only six minutes into the game and I'm already approaching 100,000 damage. And that's what I mean. When it comes to burning down battleships, like these two tried to push towards me, um, the firepower the ship has is pretty insane. It's really, really good at just countering battleships hard. Anyway, as I was saying, it's quite fast, 33 knots, and uh, 720 meter turning, so 8.1 second rudder shift, which is okay. It's not bad, uh, and it's, it's pretty mediocre. And um, then there's, of course, the speed boost that adds to this. First of all, this ship loses an absolutely absurd amount of speed in turns. Like, uh, if you do any sort of turning, you lose any value you have from this speed boost. However, if you go in straight lines, well, you can look at my speedometer down in the bottom left. I'm doing 39 knots with the speed boost, or 39.3, it keeps accelerating. So when it comes to things like uh, escaping from a bad situation, chasing a fleeing ship like I did there, or just general reposition like I need to do now, um, it's amazing, of course, but any turns, you saw I made a slight course correction, my speed dropped from 39 to 33. So, this ship loses a lot of speed in any turns, so actually using the speed boost for active dodging is not really that useful. It doesn't really give you that much value, but for all other situations, the speed boost is very nice. Of course, the default speed duration is 3 minutes. I use the module which increases the speed boost duration by 50%, which gives me 4.5 minutes. So, in fact, the majority of the game you will have the speed boost active. This does come with its downsides though, uh, because this ship handles like two different beasts with and without speed, uh, speed boost. Um, I've eaten a bunch of completely ridiculously easy to dodge torps because my speed boost hasn't been active, because you get used to the maneuverability you have while the speed boost is active, like uh, how quickly you accelerate, how quickly you can reverse, things like these, you get used to them, and then for the 90 seconds that your speed boost isn't active, uh, you suddenly become insanely sluggish. The ship is really slow to accelerate, really slow to stop when the speed boost is, um, is on cooldown, so that's going to take some getting used to, and it's caught me several times off guard already. I'm, I'm sitting in a smoke, I see traps coming, I start maneuvering, I think I can easily dodge them, but because my speed boost is reloading, uh, I in fact end up eating like the most easy to dodge stupid torps because it's so so sluggish without it. So that takes some getting used to it, so, like you kind of have to master two different modes on the ship, which is pretty interesting. The stealth on the ship is probably one of the major weaknesses of the ship. Uh, it's only, even with full stealth build, concealment camo, concealment module, you can only reach 11.5, which is of course uh, makes it impossible for the ship to be any sort of frontline ambusher because, well, pretty much most of the cruisers you face are going to be able to outspot you, like uh, Des Moines, Zaos, even Atagos, all of these guys are going to be outspotting you, Baltimores, they're all going to be outspotting you easily, so you can't really play it as a frontline ambusher. But um, the air detectability is actually only 7.1, and of course, since if you go AFT and AA range, like I do on it, you can reach 7.2 km AA range, which means you can actually engage the planes before they spot you. Only 100 meters, but it's enough to basically force the carriers to kind of th uh, spend, spend some time in your anterior every time, and it makes it easier to stay undetected and uh, force the planes to uh, back off out of your spotting range. They can't keep you perma spotted without costing them planes, which is of course valuable. Eating some damage as I move into the smoke. The Grosse is pushing up in this gap, but there is a Neptune on the right. But I think the Missouri is radaring him. And of course, close range, the AP on the ship is very strong. Just straight up. Well, Neptune isn't probably the best example, but it is useful. And close range against cruisers, I haven't had too many issues brawling. It has a good turret setup, meaning two in the front. So when you angle and push in, it's very useful against them. The Citadel, however, is quite sizable, and you will eat a bunch of unfortunate, frustrating Citadels in this thing. And uh, 
it can get quite frustrating and quite hard to master as you as well the start the first 10 games or so i really didn't like it as i said because i didn't really know the limits of what this ship can and can't do but once you get a grasp of it it does feel much more comfortable in fact uh looking at the 23 battles i've played in this ship so far I have a 65% win rate, not really that special, but I do have 111,000 average damage in it. So 111k in a tier 9 cruiser is quite good for 23 battles, and I think if I played this more, I can probably raise it even further, considering the early fumbling I did with the ship. So in terms of strength, this is obviously a strong, almost probably very strong, one could question perhaps too strong tier 9 cruiser. Uh, that remains to be seen, but there's there's a possibility that this might in fact be a bit too strong right now because, uh, well, it has a lot of it has a lot of features that makes it exceptionally good in the current meta because there's a lot of battleships in the current meta. There's a lot of passive play, and well, this ship long range HE spammer that's quite good at uh, repositioning, running away, chasing all these things. It makes it quite good at dealing with the current meta. In fact, it really shits on battleships. That's the one thing I found it really strong against. Of course, uh, if they do land some nasty hits on you, they will citadel you quite easily. The armor isn't anything to brag about on this thing. You don't, you can't really tank anything in it. They can overmatch you from pretty much every angle. But with the 18.3 game range, um, it's not that hard to stay far enough away to make sure that you can't really get hit. So I would say the ship is a bit of a learning experience. But once you do get a uh, get a hang of the ship, it it's a very strong cruiser, and ultimately I've actually quite enjoyed it. When I started playing it, I figured, oh my god, am I actually gonna go free XP the rest of this because I can't be arse grinding it anymore? But the more I played, the more I've been enjoying it. So pretty fun ship, surprisingly fun ship, considering it is ultimately a long range HE type of ship, which are usually quite boring to play. This game ended, um, not going to be the only St. Louis, uh, Louis game I'm going to be featuring. I'm going to try to feature a couple more since I've been having pretty much a lot of fun in this ship. 192,000 damage, uh, the usual achievements that you will see quite often in this ship, which is Witherer and Arsonist. And of course Confederate and High Caliber on top, which is always nice. Looking at the base XP, managed to top the scores, mostly tier 9s though, so uh, I'll take it, I'll take it. I did have a Fletcher with me, but I didn't really sit in any smokes. I, in general, wanted to avoid it for the sake of the commentary that I didn't just camp in a smoke, because that doesn't really give you a good idea of how the ship plays if you just have someone smoke you up and then you sit there, because any ship can seem strong if all you do is sit in a smoke, which is would be quite misleading. Uh, looking at the detailed report, no surprise fire damage is quite common. A lot of HE damage and a ton of fire damage. That 19% fire chance really kicking in. And most of the damage done to battleships, no surprise there either. Uh, potential damage not that high, it can get quite higher, but in a 12 minute game, almost getting 200k damage, uh, very respectable. As I said, a very strong cruiser. Anyway, let's move on to my recommended build for this ship. Right, starting off, we of course have the modules. Now, upgrade-wise, it's fairly obvious that the hull doesn't actually give us as much. On the Charles Martel, you really needed the hull because it gave you so much HP and it gave you so much rudder shift. But on the St. Louis, it doesn't actually give you nearly as much. It gives you, the most important really is the rudder shift it gives you. The HP boost is small, the AA boost is, well, it's okay. It's, a nice, it's both range and makes it significantly stronger. Uh, but ultimately, AA is really a good reason to get the upgrade for. So personally, I would highly recommend getting the range first, since you're going to be up against tier 10s a lot, and only having 16.7k of range can be quite a struggle against tier 10. So range upgrade followed by hull upgrade. Consumable wise, the premium repair, premium heal, and then as you can afford them, premium speed boost and premium uh, defensive AA because once you do have a fully upgraded ship, your AA is quite good, so it's worth getting the defensive AA to enhance it. Upgrades, Main Armaments Mod 1, AA Guns Range uh, Mod 2, for that 7.2 km range. Uh, faster Reload, as I said, that range is, when you get the upgrade, 18.3 is more than enough to be co able to comfortably play this ship. So, re Reload Mod, the Speed Boost. Now, if you don't have the Speed Boost, 
absolutely get the steering gears mod because this ship loses rudder all the time. It, the rudder is even more fragile than the IGN cruiser rudder. So if you don't have engine speed boost, get steering gears, absolutely. Finally, rudder shift and concealment. Captain Perks boys, I'm still using my Charles Martel captain. In fact, this is the captain I've been using throughout pretty much the French line and I've been very satisfied with it. It's very basic, but very solid build. Priority 1 is of course priority to target, followed by Adrenaline Rush, since once again your rudder shift uh, turret traverse is quite good, so you don't really need anything else, followed by uh, Demolition Expert, although at tier 9 you should probably get Superintendent before now. And concealment, once you have concealment, you can get demo expert, AFT, follow it up with expert marksman. Now, there is certainly an argument to be made of skipping expert marksman entirely and instead getting last stand, especially if you use the speed boost module like I do. In fact, if the Henry IV has a rudder that is as fragile as the rudder on the St. Louis, then I'm going to be specking last stand on it because it's absolutely absurd how often it breaks. Any random shell can randomly break it, like it happens all the time. Most of my repairs were not used on fires, it was used on repairing my broken rudder, which just got knocked out constantly. So entirely skipping expert marksman for last stand is a very viable option on the St. Louis and something to be worth considering. In fact, if I started this grind over all over again, if I started grinding the St. Louis from, from scratch again, I'm at like 134k XP now. If I started this over from scratch, I would get a last stand captain because I want the speed boost, but not having this steering gears mod like I run on IGN cruisers makes it very, very frustrating to play because you lose rudder all the time. So last stand is a very viable option and something I highly recommend. Anyway, that was all for me regarding the St. Louis. I will probably return with another couple of gameplays on the ship since, I, as I said, I played it quite a bit and I have quite enjoyed it. So might as well feature some games with this uh, new French cruiser. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.